Welcome to the History of Simple Things, where we delve into the fascinating history behind the little things that shape our world. Welcome back to our channel. Today, we're diving into a fascinating subject that touches many aspects of our daily lives, yet we often overlook its significance. We're talking about aerosol cans, from the hairspray you use in the morning to the air fresheners that keep your home smelling fresh, aerosol cans are everywhere. But have you ever stopped to think about where these ingenious containers came from and how they are made? Join us as we explore the history and manufacturing process of aerosol cans. The story of aerosol cans begins in the early 20th century. The concept of aerosol technology can be traced back to 1926, when Norwegian engineer Erik Rothheim invented the first aerosol can. Rothheim's invention was a significant breakthrough, as it allowed liquids to be dispensed in a fine mist. He patented his invention in Norway and the United States. But it wasn't until the 1940s that aerosol cans gained widespread recognition and use. During World War II, the United States military saw the potential of aerosol technology for distributing insecticides to protect soldiers from disease-carrying insects. In 1941, American inventors Lyle Goodhue and William Sullivan, working for the United States Department of Agriculture, developed the Bug Bomb, an aerosol can filled with insecticide. This innovation proved to be incredibly effective and led to the mass production of aerosol cans for military use. After the war, the commercial potential of aerosol cans became evident. Companies began to explore various uses for this new technology, leading to the development of products such as deodorants, hairsprays, and household cleaners. The 1950s and 1960s saw a boom in the aerosol industry as consumers embraced the convenience and effectiveness of aerosol products. One of the most notable milestones in the commercialization of aerosol cans was the introduction of the first aerosol hairspray, SprayNet, by the Helene Curtis Company in 1950. This product revolutionized the beauty industry and paved the way for numerous other aerosol-based personal care products. By the 1960s, aerosol cans were a common household item, and their popularity continued to grow. The 1970s brought about a significant challenge for the aerosol industry. Scientists discovered that chlorofluorocarbons, CFCs, commonly used as propellants in aerosol cans, were depleting the ozone layer. This led to a public outcry and increased regulatory scrutiny. In response, the industry had to adapt quickly to address these environmental concerns. The solution came in the form of alternative propellants. Hydrocarbons such as propane and butane and compressed gases like nitrogen and carbon dioxide were introduced as more environmentally friendly options. These changes allowed the aerosol industry to continue thriving while reducing its impact on the environment. Before we dive into the manufacturing process, let's briefly explain how aerosol cans work. An aerosol can consist of a few key components, the can body, the valve system, the dip tube, the product, and the propellant. When you press the actuator, the button on top of the can, it opens the valve system, which releases the pressure inside the can. The propellant, stored under pressure, forces the product up through the dip tube and out of the nozzle as a fine mist or spray. This mist is created because the propellant evaporates quickly when released from the high-pressure environment inside the can, dispersing the product evenly. Now that we've explored the history and functioning of aerosol cans, let's delve into the fascinating process of how they are made. The manufacturing of aerosol cans involves several key steps, each crucial to ensuring the final product is safe, effective, and reliable. Design and Material Selection 
The first step in the production of aerosol cans is designing the can itself. The design must consider factors such as the type of product it will contain, the desired spray pattern, and the type of propellant to be used. Most aerosol cans are made from either aluminum or tin-plated steel. These materials are chosen for their durability, resistance to corrosion, and ability to maintain the integrity of the product inside. Can Manufacturing The manufacturing process begins with the creation of the can body. For aluminum cans, a piece of aluminum is fed into a machine that punches out circular blanks. These blanks are then shaped into can bodies through a process called deep drawing. In the case of steel cans, a similar process is used, but with tin-plated steel sheets. The can bodies are then cleaned, treated, and sometimes coated with a protective layer to prevent corrosion. Valve and Actuator Assembly The next crucial component of an aerosol can is the valve system. The valve is responsible for controlling the release of the product and the propellant. It consists of several parts including the valve cup, valve stem, and dip tube. The valve cup is attached to the top of the can, while the dip tube extends to the bottom of the can, ensuring that the product is dispensed evenly. The actuator, which is the part you press to release the product, is also assembled during this stage. Filling Once the can bodies and valve systems are ready, it's time to fill the cans with the product and the propellant. This step is often done in specialized filling facilities. The product, whether it's paint, deodorant, or any other substance, is first mixed and prepared. It is then injected into the can under controlled conditions. The propellant is added next, either through a separate injection process or by mixing it with the product beforehand. Sealing and testing. After filling, the cans are sealed by crimping the valve cup onto the can body. This ensures that the contents are securely contained. Quality control is a critical part of the manufacturing process, and each can undergoes rigorous testing to check for leaks, proper pressure, and functionality. This step ensures that only cans meeting strict quality standards make it to the market. The final step in the manufacturing process is labeling and packaging. Cans are labeled with the necessary information including the product name, usage instructions, and safety warnings. They are then packed into cartons or trays for distribution. Some aerosol products may also include additional packaging, such as caps or protective sleeves. The aerosol industry continues to evolve, driven by technological advancements and changing consumer preferences. Innovations in can design propellant technology, and sustainable practices are shaping the future of aerosol products. For example, manufacturers are exploring the use of recyclable materials and eco-friendly propellants to reduce the environmental impact of aerosol cans. One notable innovation is the development of bag-on-valve BOV technology. In BOV systems, the product is contained in a flexible bag inside the can while the propellant is stored outside the bag. This design allows for the complete separation of the product and propellant, resulting in a more consistent spray and reduced risk of contamination. BOV technology is particularly popular in the pharmaceutical and food industries. Aerosol cans have come a long way since their inception in the early 20th century. From their humble beginnings as a tool for distributing insecticides during World War II to becoming a ubiquitous part of our daily lives, aerosol cans have proven to be a versatile and innovative solution for a wide range of products. The manufacturing process, involving careful design, material selection, and precise assembly, ensures that these cans are both effective and safe. As the industry continues to innovate and address environmental concerns, the future of aerosol cans looks promising. With advancements in technology and a focus on sustainability, aerosol cans will likely remain a staple in households and industries worldwide. So the next time you use an aerosol product, take a moment to appreciate the history, intricate process, and clever mechanics behind that simple spray. 
Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history, manufacturing, and functioning of aerosol cans. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.